Warning, Avengers Infinity War spoilers, warning. Warning, Avengers Infinity War spoilers, warning. Get the message? Welcome everybody, I'm the film Glenn and I'm super excited to have my very first co-host on this spoiler-filled discussion about Avengers Infinity War. My co-host today is going to be JB. Uh, JB happens to be a stand-up comedian, he happens to be the co-founder of Pat My Bat Productions, and just happens to be my best friend. We caught Iron Man uh, together back in the day, so it's only fitting he joins me for this discussion and as my first co-host. How spoiler-filled will it be? Well, here we go. The Red Skull is in it. I warned you. I warned you. But I wanted to mention the Red Skull in this introduction because during the discussion, we didn't mention the new actor's name, and I wanted to give him uh, proper credit since he's in the film. Ross Marquand is the actor's name. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Also, getting off the ground with this channel is a bit of a learning process. I do mention doing another video with him tomorrow. That's not happening. Sometimes the film glutton is the full of shit glutton. Um, but anyways, I need to get some shit together and organized. Uh, but hopefully, uh, we can get another discussion discussion together this week or the following weekend. Have it be ongoing. He's amazing. Another thing I'll mention in this introduction is a little inside baseball because I think it's funny. JB didn't have a lot of time, and he was very kind. He was he was kind enough to allow me to do a conversation while he was on the way to a production. Uh, so because I knew his time was limited, I gave him a, a, a safe phrase to like clue me in when he needed me to wrap wrap up the show. The phrase was Hulkbuster. Yeah, don't let the secret phrase be something from the damn film. Just a little advice. He was making a joke, and I start trying to wrap it up. I just want to let you guys in on that because it's very funny in context of the last 15 minutes of this. Uh, JB and I briefly discuss Iron Man, so I left that bit in, but then I cut right to when the discussion really achieved liftoff. Uh, also, at the very end, stay tuned. Uh, my next co-host um, will be Juan Aviles, another writer, director, producer, and close personal friend. That's, that episode discussion will be the state of comic book films in general. I do ask him about Infinity War. Um, his response makes me a little too worried that uh, it'll be considered spoiler-filled. So uh, I, I'm cutting it out of that episode, but I'm going to put it on the end of this episode. It also ties, in, ties into some of the points that JB and I brought up, so... Uh, I think in that way it works really well, and it gives you guys just a, a little bit more to chew on in this episode, and a little taste of of how cool Juan's going to be on the next episode when we get into every other film outside of Avengers Infinity War. Anyways, uh, I truly hope you guys enjoy the show. Let's get this thing started, and here we go. I appreciate you having me on, been, uh, you know, listening to all of your reviews and listening to the podcast and really enjoying everything. I'm a little biased as a, you know, a good friend as well, but I, I think you're doing something really good here. So I'm excited to be a part of it. And obviously it's, you know, the epic Marvel culmination of a 10 year plan. So what better project to, uh, comment on first than to do your first ever to be your first co-host. Really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, actually, I'm trying to think how long ago, because Iron Man was 2009, correct? That's right, and if you remember, we went to that movie. Yes. It happened chance, or happened chance, or whatever the word is, this is, you know, live recording, so. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, it's going to be, happening. it's going to uh, be as. You know, we, we did go to that movie, I really wasn't even that excited for it, but the trailer looked pretty good, so I thought, oh, I'll go check this out, and now, can't even imagine a world where I'm not a diehard Marvel and Iron Man fan. So Exactly. In fact, I remember watching Iron Man for the very first time in, well, not very first time, but early on in New Mexico when I was traveling. I was either back, one of the many times I was traveling back to Arizona or on my way to Florida. So I saw it in oh. literally several different states. That's incredible, and if you think about it, you were right there in New Mexico. Little did you know that that would also be the first place that you know Thor's hammer would touch down in Earth. So, absolutely, pretty cool. 
Absolutely. If you'd taken a little more of a field trip, you might could have gone and seen that. That would have been great. So really, Avengers has has aged with us, if you will. Well, let's Definitely. get. Let's get right into it. One of the reasons why I wanted uh, both of us to be talking about it is because we've both seen it twice now. I saw it last week um, for the special fan event everyone knows about at Century City AMC. Um, it was 3D showing. And then I saw it last night just at the, the Broadway AMC in Santa Monica. Do you mind sharing which theaters you saw it at and what type of viewing you watched? For sure, yeah. So I am on the other coast. We are uh, by coastal here. Technology. Um, I went to the AMC at Disney Springs for my first viewing. I was there for the premiere night. The huge theater, 24 screens, every single screen was showing Avengers that night. And every single screening was pretty much sold out. So incredible night as, you know, the box office numbers show. But anyways, and then uh, today, actually, in anticipation of this conversation and review, I went and watched it again at the Cinepolis, or Cinepolis, however they uh, prefer it to be said, that is right behind my house uh, down here in Florida as well. So it's pretty convenient to live close to a theater when you're almost as addicted as the film was. Now, I know that they have the IMAX at Cinepolis. Did you catch it on the regular screen or on the IMAX? I did standard viewing. I uh, it's, it's tough. I am, uh, as you are, a movie pass. Older, and now it's tough to ever get myself to, uh, you know, go to a non-movie pass viewing when I can. Although, uh, not to get into a totally different subject, but with the rules uh, tightening over there, that might change. So IMAX was something I was actually looking at today. There was a really cool poster with the gauntlet holding the IMAX symbol, and I thought this might be a movie to catch an IMAX before it's out of there. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, I don't want to get too sidetracked too but i am doing another video on movie pass versus uh cinemia and i'm gonna sign up for cinemia where you can watch stuff like imax and stuff so hopefully i'll have some ideas of how you could still get the most bang for your buck but also be able to see all the different viewings you want because i end up paying way too much because i catch it on opening day which means i have to pre-buy pre-buy the tickets and then last <laughs> night was my one movie pass and now they've changed the rules so my one movie pass for Avengers Infinity War was last night. But let's go ahead and jump right into the movie. Let's just get into the, the, the best stuff, since it's a short conversation. The fact that Iron Man didn't die. The whole time you're waiting for Iron Man to die, and then he, they, they just, the Russo brothers just tease you constantly and end up killing nearly everybody else. For sure. No, um, and actually it's, it's funny because having the opportunity to do a second viewing today, but knowing that in a fairly filled theater, even on a Tuesday afternoon, that not everyone there had seen it and a lot were seeing it for their first time, knowing what was going to happen and knowing all the little twists when you thought Iron Man was meeting that fate, um, it was really funny to see how well the Russo brothers truly had done, not only that I felt on opening night, but that I was hearing around me as we were all going, oh, oh, this is it. <laughs> oh, nice. You know, what's interesting about that, since I always like to talk about the viewings I did too, last night, I, I always got to catch opening night because opening night, everybody was screaming, was cheering, was gasping. We had all that stuff. Last night, the crowd was quiet. Like, I had yep. no idea. Like, I'm like, is anybody watching this? Is anybody being affected? I couldn't tell if people were being affected or what they were liking, unlike the first one where everybody was, every gasp was audible and every everybody was cheering when they needed to and everything. For sure. No, um, it's actually funny you say that because about probably 45 minutes, an hour into the film, by about the third or fourth class break, which as epic as some of these Marvel movies have been, as amazing as Avengers was and you know, different things. I was thinking about how this is the first one where there's really multiple clap breaks that the audience participated in, even in open night, even compared to some others. Um, but I leaned over to my wife during the first viewing and I said, I can't wait for viewing number two and I can actually hear the follow up line to all of the great punchlines because the audience is just so into it. And then today, same thing, like you said. Uh, you know, pretty much all those moments where everyone clapped, everyone was just observing the film, except for, you know, there's, there's a couple that just, I guess, for those first time viewers this afternoon that were in that theater that, you know, they, they couldn't help themselves. But it was definitely nice to really fully 
in capture the film, but it's also nice to be a part of that excitement of that first night when everyone, you know, on their first journey, so to speak. Absolutely, 100%. And just so we can all know, like uh, the audience can know how we felt about the film, anyone who's seen my written review or heard my uh, uh, post game knows I absolutely 100% adored it. I gave an extra, extra like. It's literally up there in my top favorite uh, Marvel films. And I can officially say that now after watching it a second time. I had time to digest it. Um, where do you put it? Yeah, it's funny because earlier today, give a little behind the scenes you had mentioned to me that you might ask me my top three Marvel films and I came up with a list and I discussed it and somebody was like really but what about these three and they named three that made me rethink all my three so it's gotten to the point where there's so many good ones at least in my opinion I'm obviously even more as you can tell from some of your writings more of a, a fanboy. I guess in the Marvel movies, but there are, there's just so many great ones. It's hard to rank. Um, and it's, it's hard to know how I fully feel about it. I think it is, it is definitely, I love it. And that's the thing too, is it's discussing the type of movie. It's so unique because the way you feel at the end, totally, I I don't know. It almost confused me. I, I couldn't quite, understand how I felt walking out of the theater because so much there was such a finale and a, and a final feel to it. Like, wow, everything just ended the way it ended. But there's also so many questions because like you mentioned earlier, they totally took us for a loop and, you know, for a ride where we had no idea where they were going. So yeah, um, it, it definitely, is right up there with any of the Avengers films. I I think as a movie, it's so unique. It might be the best film they've ever done. If you want to, you know, whatever it is that we judge movies by overall and take categories out of the equation and just talk about the greatness of a movie, it does have such power in that way because it has everything to it. And you're never bored and you're never, I don't know. Like you say, it confuses me, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. Um, for me, it, it, it is hard to compare it because it's definitely in my top favorites now, um, which of course it's a very short, I mean, I love, I do love all Marvel films, um, but you know, I, I'm a little more critical than the average fil- uh, film goer. But the, the top films, Iron Man 3, um, Winter Soldier, and um, now I'm blanking on the last one I normally put up there. Oh, Doctor Strange. Um, okay. And Winter Soldier is absolutely 100% the top. It, it soars above everything. I want to say this one surpasses it. The only reason I don't is kind of what you were touching on. It is, since it's a buildup from all the other films and an event film and then also leading into the next film because uh, Russo Brothers and Kevin Feige did lie to us. It is essentially a part one. Um, but it is also by it, it, it is also its own film. But because there's so much re- reliance on the rest of the franchise and Winter Soldier is its own isolated movie 100%. Um, sure. That's where I do think Winter Soldier etches out the lead in my book but it's really hard because it is still a solid film i disagree with i was talking to somebody the other day that was kind of comparing it to uh was pirates 2 where pirates 2 was very much to be continued when the credits rolled this is there's definitely going to be a part two and it definitely had a lot of build-up from the previous films but it was also a very complete film. It gave you all the backstories yep. of the characters. You definitely knew who Thanos was. And the truth was, it was a complete story from beginning, middle to end. People just didn't like the fact that it ended on the bad guy winning. So they feel like That's it's bad. a to be continued. <laughs> Biggest spoiler of all. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> You don't get spoiler alerts when you're listening to the spoilers podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, it. But no, yeah. And, and that's kind of what I meant is at first I was going to say it was incomplete and that's where I felt confused. But then I realized as soon as it was 
you know, I thought that I went, well, that's not really true. It is complete. It just is such an empty completion because it's tragedy. It's not happiness. And you don't expect that going in after 10 years and however many movies we're at now. Yeah. And then I got to say, since we did jump right to (laughs) the fact that Thanos wins, uh, my favorite part of the story, because it's his film in my mind, um, as a, now, I don't only need, and we always make fun of me needing sad endings, because um, anyone like that knows me knows I tend to sometimes like more heavier films, but the DC fan base should absolutely get behind this film, because, not just because it was a sad ending, but because it did have a very complex, I mean, this is one of the first Marvel films that had a very complex bad guy, because it was all about him. And then it had actual stakes. I even, take a step back, I uh, used to crit- I critique Civil War because they didn't have the balls they should have because that wasn't the same story. They didn't kill off any characters. Um, they didn't even fully paralyze a character. They just made him kind of paralyzed. But that's okay because now they made up for it by the complete massacre that was this film. They... they made it real easy going and then bam they hit you with this film sure well and it's funny because it's such a roller coaster in this movie i watched thor ragnarok and that one is obviously such a laugh riot and just such a great comedy going back to the top three that's that's one of those issues where i go gosh that is just such a great film to me and such a great comedy film and yet it's an awesome action superhero movie But anyways, I watch that and I go, you know, they went hilarious because they're making you laugh before they make you cry. And then with this movie, though there's sad things throughout and, you know, obviously, I guess if we're doing spoilers, we lose Gamora. We lose. That might have been a big one. But we lose. uh, Mm -hmm. uh, We lose Loki early. We lose Heimdall. All of them. I don't know if I said his name right, but close enough. Yeah. We're losing people, but still, it gets towards the end. And after that last fake out where you think you're going to lose Iron Man and then you don't, I went, oh, they're not going to do it. Those wimps, they're totally bailing. And then they said, yeah, (laughs) that was the biggest twist of all. When you finally thought no one was really going to die, like you said, that the stakes were still going to be way too low. All of a sudden, it's like, uh, how about this? And half the universe is gone. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, yeah, so now I've formed a new appreciation for all the other films I was harder on. Like I said, Civil War, I was hard on because they didn't have the balls. Now I'm like, oh, okay, this is why. So it really hit when they did hit. But also, I will say, um, Thor Ragnarok, even though I loved it, it was a really, really funny film. And one of the few things I was disappointed in was there was like very little uh, Ruffalo in it. And now, again, that's another critique that, because I just happen to love Ruffalo as an actor, so I love seeing him be able to showcase his acting skills, and I wanted that a little bit more in Thor Ragnarok, but again, it completely reverses it, because you had Thor Ragnarok that was like 99% Hulk, and then you have this one that's 99% Ruffalo whenever he's on screen. Absolutely. I thought that was fun. so right. No, yeah, and it was such a, it wasn't even a thought that I had, and yet it worked so well, and it was so well done, and and it was just such another mini storyline, as if they didn't have enough storylines in this movie, and then like you said, it does, it it balances out other movies. They, Thanos would be proud, essentially, it's perfectly balanced, as all <laughs> it should be. <laughs> Very nice, nice reference. Thanks. And then, uh, what about that that runtime? Really long runtime. Did that bug you at all? No, it, it's too much of a ride. There's never a time where, like I said, you're never bored. Even even though you might be devastated, you're never bored. So there's never a time where you're like, "Ooh, I've been sitting here too long." Yeah, absolutely. And no. then, and then again, you know, since they do, they take their time. Even though they have the rapid of uh, killing, like so many people at the ends. Um, they take their time throughout it, so, and again, they, they throw a lot of humor in there, we're, you know, talking about that, so it plays with you some, um, but 
then like it's every I don't know twenty minutes somebody else is dying. <laughs> so yeah. the moment you yeah. think you're going to get out of it or you think you're going to get bored, you're right back in it. And the very first death we didn't we skip right over Loki because there's so much mayhem in this. But within yep. the first five minutes, Loki's gone. What do you think about that? Yeah. Well, and I, I I did mention it just so our, you know, listeners aren't like, wait a minute, he said Loki. I mentioned it, but I kind of rolled it into Heimdall. And like you said, that is, that should be universe altering. That should be huge, and it is. And that's a whole other thing that I was hoping we'd get into with Thor and how Thor and uh, Star-Lord, you really learn in this movie how completely screwed over they get by the marvel universe but anyways uh, <laughs> but but yes you know loki dying and the way he died and i know you appreciated it you probably actually wanted to be the one to mention it but i'm the guest so the yeah. way they winked at the lack of stakes in some of their former films and the way they've killed loki multiple times or at least made him look like he was going to be dead and then he comes right back and not only comes back but as a hero and the way that in this film, he goes from good guy to disappointment by having stolen the Tesseract and essentially bringing Thanos to them. And bad guy where it looks like he's going to weasel out again and follow Thanos, Thanos to good guy where he tries to kill Thanos. And as you mentioned, becomes the first of many, many casualties for this film. Absolutely. And yes, you're right. The, the the great line, no resurrections this time or however it went, was very awesome and very uh, coupled really well with that first murder. But also it is nice to have Loki to have now a full complete story like they did play with you in that scene, but then to actually have him slowly over all the films through Avengers, through Thor, through uh, Thor Dark World, which is still worth it just in terms of the Loki storyline, maybe nothing else, but mm -hmm. in terms of the Loki storyline and then continuing through Ragnarok and now he does end a hero. He tried to do the right thing ultimately. Yeah. No, absolutely. He, um, it, it's his own little redemption, which everybody wanted. He was such a fan favorite. To so many. So, and I, I, you know, Loki, Loki has a unique place in my heart because it is strange going back to a big Marvel complaint with how the bad guys aren't layered enough generally before these last few, and especially this one, right? Uh, more especially, most especially this one. And, but they actually made the first Avengers villain a hero by the end, which is pretty incredible. And then another, you know, this movie had so many parallels to other films. A great two of them happened in that first opening scene where not only with Loki and the lost my train of thought here, but not only with Loki and then, um, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Hulkbuster, that, anyways, um, <laughs> find that spot. Okay, so as far as Loki, there's two great parallels. The first is. He was the villain in the first Avengers film. You think of that, the first culmination, the first, oh my gosh, epic of all these, you know, pieces coming together. First time we had ever truly ever seen that in pretty much cinema history. And yet to show the power of Thanos at the power of his hand, he's gone. He goes from this running, you know, powerful piece of the Marvel universe to dead within the first five minutes. But he also gets a little redemption on a uh, more cheeky fun side with the Hulk where he thinks that they're going to beat Thanos. And he says to him, well, you got two things working against you. First, I'm not as guardian. Second, we have a Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I love, that. I love that he got to use that line. No, absolutely. It's really good. There's so many little one-liners, a little tie-in to like, all the different storylines they've been able to do. Well, um, we've been going for a little while now. We're getting close to just over 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, but let's see if we can finish it up. There's so much more to talk about. Um, I really want to get into uh, even like Red Skull, the big surprise right there. 
Uh, maybe tomorrow oh, we yeah. can get one more uh, quick conversation as a part two if you'd, if you'd be uh, interested in joining us again. Sure, yeah. No, I definitely would like to uh, be a part of this some more in the future. And, um, you know, we, we definitely so, – so we can hit Red Skull. Yeah, I, I think actually a fun way to go out here in these last few minutes would be maybe to uh, hit the big spoilers and which one shocked you the most or me the most, us the most. Perfect. You want to go about it, but 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 what would you think? Uh, what you know? What haven't we said, or what have we said that we should have given a little more attention to? We obviously dove in on Loki there. Well, yeah, I would say uh, even just with not any, even getting to the desk, um, one of the biggest gas for me really was Red Skull because that was so left field for all the little things that they were throwing at us. I know he's not like that integral part of the storyline, but. Because there were so many issues with the first film and the the actor, um, blanking on the name right now, but he plays Agent Smith in Matrix, great actor and everything. But they had a problem trying to bring him back, and so there was always they, they pretty much just said he's not coming back as, as far as we all thought. So even though it was a small little part, it worked really really well, and it was a huge surprise to me, just in terms of the non death surprise surprises. For sure. No, I'm I'm a thousand percent with you there. Actually, that was one of the most like shocking moments. Like, oh my gosh, I never, my mind was not there as they're heading up to that planet, and you know, I uh, even when the cloak character is there, and you're thinking, oh, who is this? I thought it was just going to be another new character, and then all of a sudden, for them to pull that out. Um, now, I did hear I'm I'm blanking on his name as well. It's Hugo something, isn't it? Or is that his character's name? No, that's definitely it. It's Hugo something. Um, here, you keep talking. I'm going to Google on my phone. Okay. Um, so I had heard, and now while you're Googling, you can confirm this, kind of love 2018, that the um, actor is different for this one. Yes. That is okay, so 100% true. Actor. Okay, yes. It's Hugo, it's Hugo Weaving. Oh, okay, Hugo Weaving, yeah. Yeah, I, I literally, I had that in my mind. I wanted to say that, but I was like, no, we're recording this. If I say it, and it's that's actually some <laughs> writer from the 19th century or something like that, then I'm going to sound like a real idiot. Um, I don't, and fix I don't... It, fix it in post, fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> and since we're giving him credit, um, I'm just going to... Okay, I can't find it right. I was trying to give the the new actor credit too, but yeah, I mean, I I I pretty much felt like it wasn't him, but at the same time, it wasn't like it didn't take me out. I didn't go, oh, this is a different actor. It it oh, yeah, it was all. good enough to feel connected. Um, so what was one of the big uh, two points? That we'll end on real quick. Um, but uh, you didn't have a chance to talk about your big either death or big surprise. Your big favorite. Surprise. Well, so uh, this probably would be the biggest spoiler that we haven't touched on really at all. But if you look at these movies as phases, you obviously go in and everything has said, well, we know we're losing phase one characters. We just don't know who. And then they wipe out half the universe and every character that left is phase two and on. And yes. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every single character, it's it's you, you're losing the Guardians pretty much, uh, minus Rocket, right? Yeah. Uh, you lost. You lost. You, you just, Black Panther. It's the only movie that's done anything close to what you know Avengers is doing right now. Essentially, in the last like year or two, is the movie that or is the character that's gone, and that was. So I guess if I have to go with one death. It would be his quote unquote death. For those who have seen the movie know exactly what I mean there where he obviously disappears, but is he goes for her and he says, This is no place to die and you think she's gonna disappear because Black Panther can't be gone. Yep. Or so you thought. Again, you're wrong. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Not only did the that Black Panther moment get me, um, the Spider Man uh death sequence, um, that was unbelievably heartbreaking right in the arms of Tony Stark. Um, yeah. And then that, uh, that's, that'll be the point we go out on where I want to talk about the snap really quickly. Um, I will say that 
So I said Red Skull, and then also, um, I, I think the Iron Man non-death, like, like I said in the beginning, was, to me, even the biggest surprise, not, like, even surpassing all the deaths we did get, but um, the we did talk about it when we, for, after our first viewing, we got on the phone and we started talking before anything else, and um, we kind of, like, I talked about how I really feel that what they're going to do is because how are they going to handle this in terms of we know that these the characters towards the end, all the phase two you're talking about, we know they're going to come back. Why? Because we have a Guardians uh, three in the in the lineup. We have a Black Panther two in the lineup. We have a Spider-Man two coming out. So we know these characters are coming back. So even it was still heartbreaking. Um, but the theory we put forth, and now everyone's uh, kind of doing it with the snap, is everything before the snap, every death that happened before the snap, um, is not is going to remain. We're not going to get Gamora back. That was pre-snap. We're not going to get Loki back. Um, right. Yeah. And then, but then everybody after all the phase two are going to return. It's going to be Avengers four will be. The original Avengers finally coming together because we didn't have the other disappointing thing, but also I'm giving it room because we have the next one is Iron Man and, and Captain America not meeting up. They're going to meet up in the next one when all the original Avengers come together and save everybody, probably doing more of a sacrifice. But uh, yeah. is, that, is that where you're at with the, with the snap theory too on the board with everybody else? Yeah, I, definitely. I, I think especially because now, again, you pointed out earlier that the Marvel likes to tell some fibs and white, you know, little white lies. But they said before the movie came out, the you know the Russo brothers that deaths had to be permanent. That they knew that being superhero movies and given Marvel's past, that the stakes. They actually mentioned it as well. The stakes didn't seem high enough because anyone would come back. And even though that's technically true, the deaths would be permanent. And if you think about it, they can stick to that without getting rid of anyone too shocking, minus, in my opinion, Gamora. Gamora is the one that shocks me the most. But she's the only dead character that didn't disappear that, you know, would be a surprise if they moved on without them, so to speak. So I do think that's that's where they have to go, really, to stay true to, you know, (laughs) the power of the film, I guess. Yeah, no, no kidding. Uh, Gamora, that's going to be a hard one to move on to the future with because we're going to have Guardians movie most likely without her. And I mean, any of the negative reviews I read, that's where it touched upon. It was either they felt like it was too much, whatever, it was evenly handled, or it was because it is true. Even like I was saying, seeing Spider Man slowly dissolve, like, was heartbreaking to me. It was at that moment where I'm like, okay, I know they're going to undo all this. So I I was having both sentiments simultaneously and that's why i finally had to come up with okay it's got to be everything before that because we still have to have weight there has to be as thanos says no resurrections this time um but we do know that they're coming back so anyways it was interesting i think it worked really well because like i said i i was feeling both as i'm watching i'm like black panther like oh yeah he's going he's gonna come back but it's still so hard to watch and then i gotta say just the nail in the coffin that always gets me is you see Thanos sitting there smiling, and then you see that have the music, the slow melodic version of the Avengers theme, and you see the Avengers title, Infinity War, going, and then that dissolves into dust. I think that got me just as much as actually watching the individual people dissolve because wow. of, of how, I don't know, like just something about that image and the mu. I think it's the music that just. I that like last night's second viewing when I started to wanted to cry a little bit I fought it back but <laughs> but it was that moment actually seeing the title not one individual character but okay so we should uh, wrap it up let me give you I'll give it to you just to have any final thoughts I think we just have to really sit back and you know enjoy and admire what we're watching as far as an approach to movie making because. I think Marvel has just cracked the code. Uh, I do want (laughs) to, I'll share this on our spoiler podcast. I do want to mention these two little things that I had seen out there that I thought were pretty great. The first was for your friends and your family who have not seen this movie, 
hopefully you're only listening to this after having seen it. I don't know why you'd want to spoil it for yourself, but even if you do, don't spoil it for others. Doctor Strange, one of the film Glutton's favorite characters slash favorite film, saw the ending of this movie over 14 million times, and he didn't say anything to anyone. He didn't even tell Iron Man how to save the world. He just disappeared. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I'll, I'll make a little dig. Uh, I love Marvel and DC, big Superman fan, obviously. I'm sure we'll have a chance to talk on future podcasts about things like that, but I am a Marvel guy first, and I do got to mention that, you know, DC fanboys always like to say how, you know, well, Marvel can't make a serious film. Marvel can't make a dark film. Go see Infinity Wars, and then let's have that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut, cut. This is a good spot to end the conversation. Uh, Jared Blake has two amazing points right there, so uh, I'm cutting it. The rest of the conversation is him being super nice to me and me being super nice to him. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyways, it was a great honor, and I very much appreciate his time uh, for doing this uh, conversation. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and uh, cut to one of my conversation. You know, it's a little audio difference uh, that's part of the process here. I'm slowly getting everything up to speed. But anyways, uh, enjoy this tidbit of what Juan was uh, going to say about Avengers Infinity War. I Gosh, you know, I really... It's hard. To, it's one of the few movies that it's, it's just hard to talk about because... You know, there's just so much that just hits you. And I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. Um, there is one thing I feel like that, that I should be able to say, but I, I don't want to, like, ruin it. Because I think because I went in not knowing something, and then when it hit, I was like, oh, okay. But, well, why didn't they fucking tell us? Um, but, yeah, I, I definitely – I liked it a lot. Um, well, if you think so, go ahead and say it. We can edit it yeah, out. Yeah, okay. If, uh... I think that um, the fact that it's a two-parter. Okay. I feel – I, I can't it's hard to grade it because I don't feel like I've seen the whole movie yet okay you know so like as opposed to Winter Soldier you know you see that it's it has a beginning middle it, it ends you mm -hmm. know uh, Thor Ragnarok beginning middle and ends um, or just like any regular movie um, I don't know I, and it did have a it did have a good it, it did have a a full movie but I feel like it's still this is a story that specifically has a second part you know, so that's yeah. why it's hard. So that's why when I left, I was like, like, I just, I didn't know how to really grade it on that level. It's like, oh, okay, so I got to wait till, at least it's not, it's not a trilogy where then you'd really be like, oh, fuck, like, you know, how do I grade this? Um, so yeah, I feel like it was harder to summarize for people. Um, but, I, you know, just on its own, I definitely, you know, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Well, that's it, guys. That's all I got for you. Um, thanks to both uh, Juan and JB. If you want to catch the full conversation between Juan and I going over a huge expanse of comic book films, um, not including that little bit that you just heard, <laughs> uh, then that'll, that video will drop next week. It'll be longer uh, due to the topics we go over. Um, but I'm very excited to share that. Very excited to have JB on again. And again, thank you to both guys. And I'm uh, doing a few other videos. I got a Batman Ninja I'm trying to get together. I got a Movie Pass into Mia. So, you know, I've got a lot on my plate and I keep falling behind. So, I'm just saying we're dropping stuff next week. Uh, keep an eye out for me. Uh, if I can drop it sooner, I will. Until the next time, this is the film Glutton reminding you to never turn down an upgrade. Have a great night, folks.